Hi guys. So we're going to be talking about pornography. Is porn good or bad? Does porn help relationship and marriage? Let's talk about pornography. Is it good or bad? Porn, advantage and disadvantages. Now, we're going to be talking about pornography tonight. And um, I'm going to start with a video from Pastor Kingsley. Pastor Kingsley is um, a marriage counselor and a marriage coach. He's a very intelligent man. He's someone I actually watch his videos a lot. I'm a fan of Pastor Kingsley. So there was a video he made about pornography. So I want to share that video before I also share my opinion. So here's the video. Can we use pornography to spice up our love life? Can we use pornography to spice up our sex life? Ah, a few things you need to understand about pornography. Number one, when you're introducing pornography into your sex life, and this also includes reading erotic material, anytime, you are artificially stimulating that sexual passion. The problem with artificially stimulating anything is that it will affect the original stimulation. It will. Your brain has pathways. Your brain is like a machine that can be trained. Once you train it to be stimulated by a certain thing, it finds it difficult to be stimulated by another thing. Okay, so the dangers of pornography is that when you get used to pornography, you will, it will affect the attraction to your real spouse. Uh, three things are wrong about pornography. I'll run through it quickly. Number one, when you use pornography, you are celebrating sin. You need to understand the people having that sex in that video are not married. You know, they are doing this thing commercially. So you are celebrating sex. I mean, sin. You are being a partaker of their sin by encouraging it. That's one. Number two, you know, it's like you're bringing a third party into your marriage. Because that those people become a part of what is going on in your marriage, become a part of the sex in your marriage. It's like you're bringing third parties into your marriage. It has impact, you know, in your marriage. You need to realize that you are bringing people in because human beings are also spirits. You're bringing them in. Number three, you are building that mental picture of another person into your sex life. After a while, it will either affect the man or the woman, mostly men, because men are more visual and mental sexually. Men are more visual. So if that man keeps watching another woman, he will get stimulated by another woman. It means he will not be as attracted or as stimulated to his own spouse. You are, you are diverting attraction from your own spouse, which you are meant to focus on, you know, to another person. The more you keep watching that picture, that picture will resonate with arousal for you, which means there's no space for your spouse to arouse you. It eventually will affect your sex life. So pornography is bad in all ways. There is not even one single benefit of introducing pornography because it will set standards as number four or next point. It will set, set standards that are, you know, uh, um, uh, impossible to meet from the spouses. So you see those guys, they have sex for 30 minutes, they have sex for 10 minutes, they have sex for two hours. They are acting. And even when they're not acting, they are using drugs. So there's nothing normal about that sex. When you're watching that, that becomes your expectation. That becomes what you expect your husband or wife to do. And, you know, that becomes a problem. You want your wife to hang from the fan or your... So um, that was Pastor Kingsley talking, and he made a very valid point. Now, we're going to be talking about pornography, advantage and disadvantage of pornography. Pastor Kingsley is coming from the spiritual aspect, but I'm going to come from the realistic aspect. What he said is true. You know, the Bible has told us so many things that we cannot do. And the Bible has told us so many things that we are not doing. The Bible has told you not to fornicate and you are still fucking. The Bible has told you not to masturbate and you are still masturbating. The Bible has told you not to lie. Not a lot of ten commandments that you are not doing. Now, Pastor Kingsley is coming from the spiritual aspect, which he said, mm, porn is not good because those people who are doing porn are not married. So, I agree with him on the spiritual aspect. So, we are going to drop that spiritual aspect and be realistic because almost all of you are watching porn. Almost all of you are fucking. Almost all of you are fucking and you're not married. So, let us come to the relatable aspect. You know me, I'm realistic. Mm -hmm. I want to be realistic because no matter how they tell you this thing, these are the things that you are doing. Good. Pastor Kingsley said, there are no advantages to pornography. But, like I said, he came from the spiritual aspect. And I'm going to come from the realistic aspect. The advantages to pornography. Now, 
Pornography is good, but too much pornography is bad. Whenever we use English language, let us understand that it is the too much that is the problem. Even the Bible said, too much of everything is bad. It is anything you do too much that becomes an addiction. So as a human being, you must learn what is called control. It is control that makes you responsible. Irresponsibility comes in when you cannot put control to the things that you do. If you eat too much, you are irresponsible because you're going to grow fat and bloated. If you go out too much in the night, you are irresponsible because you'll be looking like a thief. Anything you, if you have sex too much, you become a prostitute, you become a gigolo. So anything you cannot control is the problem. It is not what you are doing. The Bible said too much of everything is bad. Now, advantage of pornography. In this part of the world, where sex education is a taboo, how do you learn sex if you don't watch porn? Most of the things we enjoy during sexual intercourse are the things we watch in pornography. The disadvantage about pornography is the fact that you are watching something that somebody is not explaining to you. Because so many times you sit down and you watch pornography, you see a man giving a woman head and you don't even know where he's putting his tongue. There's nobody to tell you this is the clitoris, this is the vulva, this is the blah, blah, blah. You're just seeing two people shouting. So many times, most of you don't learn from porn. You just watch it because you don't understand what's going on there. But pornography has helped in our sex life. Because in this part of the world, nobody taught us sex education. Yet, your husband and your wife want you to be good in bed. These are realities. That man that you want to be good in bed, where is he supposed to learn about sex? The problem is, a lot of us lie to ourselves. We are liars. You will come on my live video and be shouting, blessing is wrong, but you watch pornography. Blessing is wrong, but you fornicate. Now, the point is, I'm not saying fornication is right, or, but I'm saying you are doing it. Because you are doing it, we need to find a solution to it. If we keep living in denial, we will continue to be damaged. In this part of the world, we are damaged because we lie to ourselves. You know fornication is bad, but you are doing it. Now that you are doing it, how do we resolve it? That's where I come in as the core blessing. I'm one woman who don't want to lie to herself. Yes, Pastor Kinsley has said fornication is bad. We agree. But you are fornicating. How do we resolve the fact that you know that fornication is bad and you are doing it? Pornography is bad. We have agreed. But you are watching porn. How do we resolve the fact that you know that porn is bad and you are watching it? Reality. You don't want to face reality. You know it's bad. You're very good. Oh, bless me. You are misleading the young girls. You're mis but you're doing it. Now, if you're doing something that is wrong and we do not talk about it, how do we find solution to the problem? You know fornication is bad, right? But you're fucking. Then if I want to come and talk about fornication, you say I'm misleading the young girls. But you're doing it. I am bold to talk about the things that you do. I don't want to live in denial. You watch porn. Pastor Kingsley came and said porn is bad. You know porn is bad, but you will still watch porn this night. You have porn in your phone. You have, that is, in fact, that you, are in, in fact, you subscribe to pornography. But you are here saying, oh, pastor, you wrote it well. But you watch porn. But the coral blessing is bold enough to tell you that you watch porn. Now that you are watching porn and you know it's bad, how do we deal with it? The point is, because you live in denial, you never learn. If you stop denying, you will watch porn and learn from porn. I watch pornography. But trust me, every sexual intercourse I know today, I learned it from porn. I learned it from pornography and I learned it from reading books. But some of you cannot watch porn without masturbating. I can watch porn without masturbating. I don't masturbate with porn. I watch porn like a normal movie. Yesterday, I was watching Sex Life. I was writing. Some of you will be watching that sex life and you'll be masturbating. But me, I was writing. I was watching 365 Days. It's a sexual movie. I was writing. When I watched Fifty Shades of Grey, I was writing. I was up and I was jotting things down. I was writing what I was going to use to write my book. I was not masturbating. Why? Because I am learning. But you, you're going to watch that same thing because you live in denial. And you don't understand what pornography is about. That's why you masturbate with it. You lie to yourself. In this part of the world, you will lie a lot to yourself. And that's why you don't learn anything. That's why most of us are smarter than you. Because people
people like us don't lie to ourselves. We learn. Pornography has an advantage. It teaches you about sex. Yes, the Bible said we should not fornicate, but we are fornicating already. Since we are already fornicating, how do we help ourselves? We the fornicators. Those of you that are not fornicating, the church people we have heard, you the holy ones. We that are not holy. We that are fornicating, masturbating, and watching porn. What, are, what is going to happen to us? We cannot kill ourselves. The spiritual ones that will go to heaven, we have heard. We that are doing the things that the Bible says we should not do. Let us help ourselves. And that is where guide comes in. Because 90 to 95% of people are having sex. There is no preaching that is going to stop people from having sex. Even a lot of pastors that are preaching about fornication are doing the things that they are saying they should not do. A lot of reverend fathers that are preaching about fornication are fornicating. Father, they fornicate. Sister, they fornicate. These things are happening everywhere. The problem in this part of the world is that we never get solution because we live in denial. We are hypocrites. We are backwards in this part of the world because we are hypocrites. We lie to ourselves. That's why our sex life is not interesting. Your husband is telling you not to twerk, but he's looking for an ashawo that can twerk. Pastor Kinsley said something about expectation. With or without pornography, people always have expectations that they never see out. If anybody have watched Sex Life, we can relate it. That's why they say, marry your friend. When you marry your friend, you'll be able to share your imaginations with them. The reason why most of your fantasy die is because you don't marry your friend. There are some certain things you want, you've visualized in your mind about sex you want to do, but you cannot do it because you don't know how to communicate it to your friend. When you find somebody that do that thing that you want, you see yourself being addicted to that person. Sex is not bad. And pornography is not bad. It's too much pornography that is bad. Now, what is porn? Porn is watching people that are acting. Because it was over time when I began to do my research, I realized that porn is even a movie. It's a script. That thing we watch is a scripted thing. Those girls are not feeling anything. Some of them are on drugs. Some of them are shouting. It's a script. Good. Now, you've understood that it's a script. They are acting that script to give you different visuals about sex. Different styles, what you can do with a woman's body, how she can feel happy. During our mother's days, there was really nothing like head. Head just came during our time now. Our mothers were having sex with our fathers. They did not give them head. But in our generation, if you don't give us head, we cannot come. Me, if you don't give me head, I'm not knocking. The world has evolved. And where did we learn all this head from? We learned it from pornography. We were able to watch porn and see that, ah, if a man actually puts his tongue here, something can happen. It is from pornography that you have seen a lot of women react to head. That's why instead of giving it to your wife or to your girlfriend, it is the reaction that you see on porn that you come to give to your, to your, to your, to your girlfriend. It's the same thing as um, smoking. You see weed. Weed is very medicinal to the body. Now, when you smoke weed too much, now you feel mad. You smoke weed without eating. You smoke weed to sleep. Every 24 hours, you're smoking weed. Now, that time, weed feel make you mad. But if you smoke weed moderately, weed is medicinal. Cigarettes is not that bad. You can smoke during cold. You can smoke, but don't smoke it too much. The same thing as fidelity. Most of you do not understand that you have power over your body. Somebody was arguing with me on Tunde Head Knots. If you understand the power, you can control your body. You can control your organ. It's your body. It's your pussy. It's your manhood. Some of you have not understood that you can control your entire body. Some people don't have that control. It is not every time you have a reaction as a man that you must knock. It is not every time you are wet as a woman that something must enter you. It's called control. Let me tell you how sex works. When you're watching a porn movie, it is not what they are doing in the porn movie that is exciting you. It is what you're visualizing in your head. When you're watching a porn movie and you're seeing a man kissing a woman or fingering a woman or sucking a woman, 
look at what you are going to do. You have put yourself inside the television and you start to imagine that you are the one doing that thing to that woman. That thing now begins to excite your body, begins to excite your brain. It's not what the man is doing. The fact is that you have painted a picture in your head, now you're the one handling the woman. That's porn. It's your mind. If you don't want to, if you don't want to enjoy porn, you will not put your mind in it. You can watch porn like a normal movie and you will not wait. If you don't visualize, what are you talking about? I they watch pornography like normal movie. Porn doesn't turn me on. I have never watched pornographic movie and I get turned on. You might not believe me. If I want to get turned on, I visualize in my head. I have my own visual in my head. If I want to get turned on, if I want to have sex, I can paint pictures. I don't need pornography to paint pictures. I paint my own picture for my head. I will go club. You get some picture where I will paint for my head now. Like, if I want to get myself turned on right now, I could close my eye and see myself driving myself in a G-Wagon. I just drove to a club. And in that club, I just saw like four guys, tall, dark guys. And those tall, dark guys, they were so cute, slim and tall. Then I asked them, what does it take to have the four of you tonight? And they tell me, two million naira each and I just go to the boot of my car open my bag and give them two million naira each in dollars the guys hop into my car and as they hop into my car I drive them home from the door one grabbed me Help. I visualize my own sex life I don't need you know the funniest part? I don't even need a face. All I need is a picture in my head. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'm going to visualize how the guys will carry me from my door to my bed to my... What are you talking about? Sex is your head. Somebody said four guys only. Sex is your head. Your mind. It has nothing to do with the pornography that you're watching. I'm just trying to paint a picture here. So I don't, I don't believe that porn has so much of damage. Uh -uh. The damage is the things that you do with your mind, with your head. To me, I feel that sex have more of advantage, especially when you're married. I recommend pornography for my, cup, for my, for my, for my couples when they come for therapy. Very important. Yes. There was a time... Two of them. I'm going to tell you what I rec recommended for one couple that never had sex for five years. They never had sex for five years. They kept having misunderstanding. For every time they want to have sex, they always have misunderstanding. So when they came to consult me for therapy, I introduced them to pornography. I didn't introduce them to the normal pa, 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 pornography. No, I introduced them to soft porn that has storylines, like all the sex life that we get to watch, 365 days, 50 shades of gray, you know, all the soft porn. And I told the man, there's this very exciting thing a lot of couples need to try. Have you tried making a video of yourself when you're making love with your wife? I always advise you to marry a couple because you are safer with the man when you're married to him. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you cannot leak your wife or your husband the video because you're married to them. Even when you're divorced to them, if you leak their video, people are going to tell you you're stupid. You can sue them. Good. So I used to advise my couples. Make a video when you're having sex with your spouse. Then watch it later. The man was skeptical at first when I told him that. He was like, you're a weird therapist. I said, try it. These are couples that have not had sex for five years. And he said, when he was making out with his wife, he was recording. And he said to me, bless him, while I was recording, because I knew that the camera was watching, I didn't know where the strength and the effort was coming from. He said that was what he observed. He realized that he, kept, he, he didn't get tired because he knew that the camera, he wanted to watch himself and he didn't want to watch himself doing rubbish. So he saw himself becoming creative, you know, spanking because he knew that the camera was watching. And the woman said because she knew that the camera was there, she was screaming. She wanted to watch herself and he be excited. And when they were done with themselves, they said they used their video to have sex. 
Whenever they're not in the mood, the woman says she watches her video and she gets turned on. And the man said he watches their video and he gets turned on. Yeah. Just keep the video safe. Archive them well. And that's why it's called a marriage. So watching porn as a couple, trust me, is good. <laughs> what works for you? You know, this spirituality, this heavenly race that all of us are running has made so many of us lose out on the real essence of life. The truth about it is that we are running heavenly race. But at the end of the day, we are not running the right heavenly race. You don't want to watch porn, but you want to masturbate. You don't want to watch porn, you don't want to masturbate, but you want to fornicate. You don't want to watch porn, you don't want to fornicate, but you want to commit adultery. You don't want to commit adultery, you don't, but you want to lie, you want to cheat, you want to backbite. Yeah. Yeah, see some other damn commandment you are not fulfilling now. The heavenly race one. <laughs> so, I just feel, let's be realistic for once. Because a lot of things your pastors tell you not to do, you are doing it in your closet. That's the truth. I don't think a pastor is supposed to tell a couple what to do in their room. Watch porn if you want to watch porn. That's whatever works for you. If a couple, if you go and ask your, your pastor now, eh, I want to have anal sex with my wife, your pastor will tell you no, that the Bible says you should not have anal sex. She's your wife. So long as she consents to it, so long as your wife wants you to penetrate her through the anus, so long as she likes it, do it. She's your wife. What happens between you and your wife is not even supposed to be discussed with anybody. That's why it's called marriage. That's why it's called a union. That's why it's called privacy. So to me, I don't feel like there is anything wrong in watching a pornographic movie. Don't get addicted. Um, porn is supposed to spice your sexual life. It's a spice. It's not supposed to be your sexual life. Um, sex is supposed to give you some sort of whoa moment. You know, the very first time I had sex on the dining table, I watched it in a porn movie. And I was actually having sex in the sitting room on top of the couch. Do you understand? As I was banging on top of the couch, I told my man, baby, I want you to fuck me on the dining. And he just lifted me from the chair and took me to the dining. I swear to God, that dining sex is the most memorable sex I've ever had because we had to push everything out of the dining. I think a glass even broke. You know that point, they keep you on the dining. You push everything. I was here, the deep freezer, kitchen, on top of the sink. There are no boundaries to this shit. These are the things that make sex exciting. A lot of couples have lost their sexual life because of these particular scriptural things that they keep giving you guys. God says you should not watch porn. God says you should not do this one. What did God not say you should do? Eh? That's why your sex lives are boring. And that's why a lot of people who claim that they are religious don't enjoy anything in this life. Because you just put a chain to yourself. You just put some annoying restrictions to yourself. Because if I don't tell you what is going on in my sex life, you will never know. Maybe when you're watching Oibo, you enjoy it. Why people are people who are practical? Why people are people who want to enjoy life? When you watch the white people, you enjoy the way they do things. You can enjoy yourself too without putting chains in yourself and saying the scripture say, the scripture say. The scripture has said so many things. So to me, I feel it's not pornography. It's you as a person. So as a human being, you just have to learn to control yourself. So advantages of porn. Number one advantages of porn is that it helps your sexual life. But don't watch it too much. Porn is supposed to spice your sexual life. It's not supposed to make your sexual life. Porn is supposed to help you to be creative. Yes. It's supposed to help you to be creative. If you're a woman and you watch porn, you'll be good in bed. You will know how to scream. It was in pornography movie, I learned how to scream. It was, in, it was from watching porn, I realized that Screaming is a turn on for men. I never knew that screaming was a turn on for men before. I thought that when you scream during sexual intercourse, you're being loud. I didn't know it was a turn on. It was during sex. I know the funniest part. When I'm watching porn, what excites me more is the moaning. I like it when a guy moans. Like I used to tell my man, if you want to drive me crazy, just 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 make that sound. You know, some men don't know that sound actually turns the woman on. Some men, when they're making up the before me man, they be like, mm, 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 mm. There was this guy I dated when he's coming. In fact, he's come when he comes. 
I like the expression. There's, there's this thing in his face. There, there's this. Oh, I don't know how to explain it, but pornography will teach you all that. Who want to teach you? Because people like us that are even talking about sex, we are bad people. We are controversial. We are whatever. So imagine if everybody don't want to talk about sex like blessing, and they say you should not watch porn. How do you not want to learn about this sex? Who wants to teach you? Let's be honest. There are no sex education in this part of the world. So how do you want people to be good in bed? Let's be honest. You know, sometimes when we, when we preach this, our um, Bible, let's be realistic. Let's leave this Bible safe and just be realistic for once. How do we learn about sex if we don't watch porn? Because porn is even the only thing that we leverage on right now in Africa to know about sex. Every of your boyfriend that is good in bed has been watching porn. It is from porn that you know that you can jack a woman up. Who taught you? In fact, let's even go to the roots. Who taught you about sex? A lot of the sexual things you know. You saw it somewhere. Some of us just use the boju. That's why some of you women don't know how to have sex. You just know how to open leg. Because you do not know the advantage of these small, small things that we watch in porn. Like screaming, dressing sexy, doing your face in a certain way, whining your body in a certain way, the kind of nightwear you should wear, knowing where to touch a man. No, some of you don't know those things. That's the honest truth. So, I feel that one advantage of watching porn is that it teaches you, but too much of everything is bad. Too much of porn is bad. Too much of smoking is bad. Too much of eating is bad. Anything that you do, too much is bad. For everything you want to do is to have control over it. It's the advantage of watching porn to me. I just feel porn is addictive. Porn, the disadvantage of porn is like, it can be addictive and it can be like um, a... How do I, what English do I use? Um, a fallback, a plan B. When you watch porn too much, sometimes you might not want to reconcile with your spouse because you can just go to the television and just touch yourself and you're good. It's just like having sex toy. Uh, pornography is like sex toys. When you have sex toy, you will not have to beg your husband too much. If he tell you I'm not in the mood, you just enter inside the toilet and go and help yourself. But when you don't have sex toys sometimes, when your husband says I'm not in the mood, you say, baby, please, now I want you. You know, you do all those things and he could come around. It's the same thing as porn. <laughs> when you are addicted to porn, <laughs> a woman, my name is Abeka but you cannot compare to the real stuff. So the point is, when you are doing anything, you need to have what is called self-control. There is nothing in this life that you don't have self-control. So you must be able to control yourself and say, okay, let me do it this particular time. Let me do it this. That's what makes you a mature person. Maturity is the ability to control what you do. If you've not learned self-control, then you're not mature. The same thing as cheating. What is fidelity? Fidelity is the ability to control yourself. It's an in control is an intentional act. You telling yourself, oh yeah, you don't do. What is control? You there for club. You go tell yourself, ah, 12, don't knock. Make I they go house. Now be control. But because some people go day club, they no go no say 12, don't knock. They go dance till 5 o'clock. That's control. So control is intentional. It is deliberate. Control are the things that you want to do. So maturity simply means... I know when to stop. I know when to put a stop to this. You don't do. A child does not know when to stop. A baby does not know when to stop. They keep going, going, going. But as an adult, you know when to stop. So you should be able to control yourself. Somebody is saying not everyone can control. Then you learn it. If you cannot control yourself, then you are a baby. Because in life, you will always do things. It's not even about pornography. If you cannot control yourself, then you will die quick. Because you will drink too much. You will smoke too much, you will club too much, you will womanize too much, you will spend too much. What is watching weight? Weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. Controlling what enters your mouth. What is fat? You cannot control what enters your mouth. Anything you say, you chop. That slim person you are admiring, she controls what enters her mouth. She doesn't eat everything she sees. You that is fat, you eat everything you see. That's the difference between you and I. What are you not talking about? So if you want to grow, if you want to be successful in life, you must learn control. You must know when to go out and when to come back. So if you've not learned control, then you are still a child. Maturity is the ability to control yourself. Anger, or movement, even your movement, to you control your movement. It's not everywhere they call you that you go. Are you a cow? You're not a cow. So you must learn control. Control is the act of maturity. Knowing when to stop. You don't let me carry go house. My wife will find me. Make her go house, my children. Day. That is control now. So if you've not learned control, then you've not started life. If you've not learned control, that is when you can womanize. You don't know when to stop. 
A lot of men who do not have control are the men who have messed up their homes and marriages. If you have control as a man, you will know when to stop. You will know when to tell side chick. Oh, baby, I did go house. Once in act seven, no call my number again. Control. That's control. A man cannot, the, the, the last control is the one that will allow side chick to be calling him both in the house. So men who have control, once it is seven o'clock, you don't call my number. If you call me, I'll block you. I'm, I'm my wife. That's control. So you must learn how to manage situations as a man or as a woman. You don't overdo things. Most times, we mess up our emotions because we overdo things. If you overcall a man, he will take you for granted. If you overcall a woman, she will take you for granted. If you overgive a man, he will take you for granted. If you overgive a woman, she will take you for a mother. So those things are the things we do too much. So you do it little. Anything you do too much becomes a problem. Even the Bible said it. Too much of everything is bad. Do it. Not too much. So control is something you learn. So you have to learn control. Even sex. If you overdo sex, it's too much. You must know when to stop. You must know when to, okay, you don't do. So what are you talking about? So, to me, um, pornography is not bad. Pornography is not bad. I don't see it as bad. Maybe from the spiritual aspect, they will say it's bad. But from the realistic aspect, spiritual aspect, pornography is bad. Realistic aspect, pornography is not bad. So, Pastor Kisley is not wrong because he is coming from a spiritual aspect. And I am not wrong because I'm coming from a realistic aspect. It's like fornication. Spiritually, fornication is bad. Realistically, fornication is not bad because almost all of us are fornicating. How many men will marry you today without knocking you? All those ones they are preaching in church is story. How many brothers in the Lord have married their wife and they did not knock the gay? So all those ones is just making you know, be like, say, you know, they preach gospel. We are talking about reality. How many of you are going to marry a wife where you know fuck? Well, how many of you are going to marry a husband where you know fuck? Let's be realistic for us now. <laughs> so, <laughs> these are the issues. I don't know if you're getting my point. So, Pastor Kinsley is right from the spiritual aspect. He's talking biblically. I agree with him. Realistically, it doesn't work. And that's why sometimes people run from church. People run from church because a lot of times... Church is not realistic. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're telling us not to fornicate. Don't tell us not to fornicate. Tell us the consequences of fornication and how to protect ourselves. That's my advocate. Because I know that you will fornicate and you will hide it from me. That's why we have a lot of hypocrites in church. That's why we have a lot of demons in church. It's because their pastors have asked them not to do something and they are doing it. So they will do anything to hide that thing that they are doing. A lot of people are fornicating. Baby, I'll call you back, please. A lot of people are fornicating because a lot of them do not understand the consequences of fornication. And they are messy. Some of them are getting pregnant infections. I will never tell anybody not to fornicate. I will teach you the consequences of fornicating and how to protect yourself. Because the truth about it is, you will do it. You will do what you want to do. That's the honest truth. So instead of me to be telling you, don't want to get, no one get, I will tell you, see. The Porn helps. It helps a lot. It teaches you a lot. Whenever you watch pornography, learn from it. You don't just have to watch porn to masturbate. Sometimes you watch porn because you want to learn something from it. You want to distract yourself. You want to see, you know, what's this woman doing? Where is this pleasure coming from? What's happening here? What is going on here? What is happening here? And when you watch porn, sometimes you get to...
realize some part of your body you've never really felt before that are sensitive. Very important. Yeah, I see a man licking a woman's ass while she's so she's going crazy, and I'm like, ah, I don't know, say this thing. I start to read about it. That's how.